All right. Uh, after about a month and a half off, we're back. So we did our first gig back in a while in uh, Derry, New Hampshire. Derry, Derry. We played at the, I think it was a Tupelo Music Hall. It was a cool venue, just a uh, intimate venue, we like to say. And uh, just had a really fun night. We went to, hey, Jeremy, what's up? We went to uh, this place called Strange Brew after and hung out with some of uh, my friends up here. I have a couple friends that are in the area. And uh, yeah, it was a great show. Uh, I, I made sure to practice before uh, coming back out on the road, especially the keyboard stuff. Uh, you know, I don't play keyboard every day, although I probably should. Uh, it's, so that's always a little strange for me. But uh, I thought it was a great show. It was, it was fun being back with the guys. And uh, that's it. Hello, uh, L-E-L. Is that how you say your name? L-E-L. So just wanted to do a quick stream, uh, letting you guys know that we're back. And uh, we got a bunch of gigs this month. Uh, we're going to Rhode Island tomorrow. We're in New Hampshire right now. And uh, then we are playing on Long Island on, uh, hey Tom, Long Island on, uh, on Saturday. And we have a rehearsal on Friday. Uh, just trying to add some stuff to the repertoire, which is always fun. And uh, we're going to be at NAM. We're playing California dates in like the Southern California area. We're playing on, and this is a Blue Oyster cult I'm talking about. We're playing on uh, the Thursday and the, f the Sunday of that week. So I'll be at NAMM uh, Friday, I'll be at NAMM Saturday, and probably some of Sunday afternoon, depending on how crazy the schedule is. Looking forward to that. Uh, also, because this was a, a drive gig for me today, I couldn't bear to leave home without this. Uh, I won't be making a habit of this because I won't be getting much sleep with it, but this is uh, my new toy, the Oculus Rift. I love this thing. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, so... Hey, Jason. Uh, tonight I used my standard guitars. I used... Um, I used the Axis, the Slime Burst Axis, and I also used the um, very Axe Standard. I, I was just thinking about how much I love the Variax tonight. It's it, it's an inexpensive guitar. It plays great, and all the you know there's all the crazy stuff that I can do with it. So that's really awesome. Um, the, the Oculus Rift, uh, Tom just asked. That is a um, it's a virtual reality headset. I actually brought it on the road so I could show Eric because uh, Eric and I are both gamers. Oh, thank you, Jose. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we, we whipped out an interesting, uh, we whipped out a, uh, a deep cut tonight. We did flaming telepaths, uh, and I don't know why, but I had like a feeling, and, and no one said anything, Eric didn't say anything about it, but I had a feeling we were going to do it today. Um, <laughs> uh, so I practiced it yesterday. Is the Oculus the most addictive Christmas gift ever? It is, um, although... I think it's just my personality because I'm playing the game called Elite Dangerous, and it's uh, it's, it's it's like a grindy game. But the fact that it's um, you know based in like a space environment and that's very sci-fi, and it's just when you can like look around the cockpit, and you know, oh, but I, you want to take it a step further? I also brought um, the joysticks. I just wanted to, I, you know, I, I thought Eric would get a kick out of it, and you know, because me and Eric are into all that stuff, uh, and he did. Although I warned him, he he tried Skyrim. I said, if you play this game, you're gonna get sick, and he he said, okay. He played it for like a minute and said that that's enough. And I there's something about that. Hey, uh, Jean Claude, uh, thank you very much. I actually uh, one of my friends who is out here is uh, he works for Line Six, and um, he came tonight with his buddies. And we, we, you know, did a little bit of Helix chat. Something interesting I just did with the, the Helix, not the Helix, but the HX. Um, I have a, uh, someone who follows this channel, um, really, really nice gentleman. He got an H and he was having some trouble getting it programmed. So I actually, he hired me to do, hey, Hippie Long, to do a remote session where I, we were on Skype, I think, or FaceTime. And I remotely accessed his computer, 
And while he was playing through the Helix, I was on my computer changing the stuff in HF while he played and I was able and he like he would tell me like oh you know I really want the distortion to be here on this pedal and it's you know so I would remotely program his helix which is pretty awesome like we're in the future now and uh and then you know he w the, the only the only bummer was I couldn't really hear what he was hearing but he um he was pretty good about describing it like he would say okay you know this preset is it's a little too thin sounding so i would you know make adjustments or you know need a little more gain or that, that echo is too you know it's too many repeats on that so it was it was an interesting experience it's crazy the stuff you can do i'm you know I'm, i learned so much about that you know, what, you know what happens is you try to solve a problem in your studio and you end up learning new skills from just problem solving and I was just having that conversation with someone tonight about doing all that stuff so yeah that's the uh, that's the road update um, anything else oh the um, I'm really excited to get that Federa guitar but they're, they're building it I've been playing the loner I didn't want to bring the loner out this week I could have um, two reasons I didn't want to bring the loner out number one it's a loner and it would uh, it wouldn't be in my care it would be with the crew, and the crew's great, and they take great care of the, the stuff, but um, I didn't want to do that to something that isn't mine. Uh, and also, I'd have to make a whole new set of presets for it, Like, and that's not because there's anything wrong with it. It's just I, I, I think about when it comes to Helix stuff, I feel like the guitar you use makes a huge difference, and, you know... It, Okay, like for example, someone makes a preset and they have a Telecaster, right? And you play that preset with a Les Paul, it's not going to sound the same as the person who designed it was intending. You know, it's not going to it's not going to work. Uh, so what I end up doing is I make copies. I with this gig, I mainly try to use four sounds. I, and um, within those four sounds, I have set, and you guys, if you've seen the Helix videos, you know how I do it. Uh, it goes from my, it's like clean, grit, crunch, lead, right? And it's basically from clean, very clean, to very dirty, uh, and different stages in between. And then in each of those presets, I have things that I turn on and off. Uh, so what I do is, because, hey JJ, uh, because I do that, I, and it fits neatly in four, I just copy those four onto different banks, and each bank represents a different guitar. So bank one for me is the Axis, bank two is the Variax, bank three is a Strat, or I double with that one, because basically the Variax Magnetics is a Strat, so that's when I use the Ver when I use the Magnetics, like on Shooting Shark or something, I'll use that. And then I have one for the Steve Morse, I have one for a Telecaster, uh, and uh, yeah, so I have all these different presets. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to make BOC. I just wasn't planning on it. I wasn't actually even considering the possibility of having that loner uh, Federa guitar this long. Um, and I offered to give it to them back. I said, hey, guys, you, you know, do you want this guitar back? They said, no, hold on to it. The guys at Federa are, are awesome. Uh, I got to jam with them the other day uh, at a friend's birthday party. Uh, and uh, Joey from Federa was there. He's great, great guy, great bass player. It's a very good time. And I think you could find that on Facebook. Someone posted it. We did the going down. It was a pretty good version too. Um, yeah, but I'm excited about it, and it's gonna, you know, it might take another month or two. They they said it's gonna be pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, I I don't know what it's how it's gonna turn out. It's uh, I, uh the cool thing about those guys is. You know they're so passionate about what they do that they they, I, they said if you get this thing and you don't like it, we're gonna work on it. We're gonna tweak it. I mean I don't see how I wouldn't like it. They're, the stuff they make is beautiful, but you know, uh, especially since they have my guitar there right now and they're copying the neck, that should be really cool. But yeah, um, so I could have brought more guitars out this weekend, uh, but I figured it would be overkill, especially since we're get, just getting back into it. Um, I didn't want to have the added aggravation of doing extra tweaking I just wanted to focus on the music and you know I know I have those two guitars those two guitars are great for me uh, especially you know the Variax is like the ultimate backing 
guitar, back, I mean, backup guitar. I was wondering if you ever covered April Wine on your show or UFO. I don't think so. No. We play we play gigs with them a lot with Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, those they're both great guys. Um, I kind of fangirled out a little bit on Vinnie Moore the last time we played with uh, UFO, uh, but I, I think uh, I, I don't know if we're playing with them again. I, I hope we do because they're a great band. Uh, but no, we've never covered them on the band. Basically, the stuff we cover is either requested by. Um, the guests, like usually we, when we have a guest on, we say, what do you want to play? Um, and, uh, that's done so that the guests, you know, cause the, like, we want to make the guests comfortable and, and it's really, it's really their show and they're on, we want to cover, you know, like stuff that we like, we listen to, cause that's, we basically play what we like. I mean, in rare occasions, there have been people that are just, you know, unbelievable supporters of Band Deacon. They're always... You know, just, they're all watching everything, and they they tip very generously. And sometimes, in a rare case, if if one of those people who's just you know really great to us, like they want to hear something, we'll go out of, out of the way to do it. Like the the craziest example of that is we did a fan request show, and we did Halo by Porcupine Tree, which is one of the hardest songs we ever had to do. That that took an unbelievable amount of work to do. Uh, Live, do you use the angle Steve Morse with the Helix? How do you connect with the Helix? Okay, um, I used to use the angle Steve Morse with the hippie law. I'll get back to that question. That's an interesting question. Um, I used to use the angle Steve Morse with the pod um, because the pod was great for what it was, but it was definitely lacking in a few areas. Um, I have a video on this channel about how to set up the angle with the helix. I don't use it live mainly because I don't need to use it live. Um, it's it's a great sound. Oh, thank you, Jason. Uh, it's a great sound. It's a great sounding amp. But to be honest, I haven't really used it much lately. Uh, I haven't the the helix. It's just just the nature of what we do, everything going in direct, and I haven't, you know, I can't really make that much noise in my current uh, situation, so, you know, I haven't I haven't done it live. I think I did it maybe once, and then it was just it drove the crew crazy, you know, and also you add all these different potential uh, fault points, you know, you you add these potential problems. Uh, with bad cables or noise, and I said, you know what? The the whole reason I ended up getting at this modeling thing, oh, shit, sorry, was uh, simplicity. You know, the idea of just what's up, accelerate. Um, the idea of just uh, being able to plug in and, and play a gig with no tweaking was very attractive to me. So I've never used it on a BOC gig. The only time I really did it was for a video because, you know. A lot of people were asking questions on uh, about four cable methods, so I did a four cable method video. Also, wanted to try it because I used to like doing four cable method with the pod, but with the Helix, the, to me the the sounds are so good that I just I don't need to do it. Uh, so I know it doesn't really it's not a satisfactory answer, but it's an answer. Uh, but still, Steve Morse is a great amp. The amps I'm using when I do use an amp. And I'm doing, we have a video that Andy and I shot about the, it's like a studio tour video that's coming out in a couple of weeks. I still use my VHT, uh, my VHT uh, power amp. I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. A Gorilla Amps. <laughs> hey, those sounded good. Um, I still use that. I love that thing. It's in the rack. Um, on the road is your, my, my Helix is connected to the, uh, sorry. The Variax is connected to the Helix with the VDI cable, and that gives me access to both Variax, you know, digital and the magnetic signal through one cable. It's pretty slick. Okay, Hippie Long said, can fans pay uh, for albums to be covered? I would say no is the official answer unless 
someone, and this, uh, this is not meant to sound greedy, uh, if someone paid a ridiculous amount of money and said cover an album, and it was enough to pay everybody for their time, you know what I mean? Because everybody donates the time. I mean, we get, we, we take like whatever, when you guys use a tip jar, uh, that all goes, we split that up and, you know, but that's great. And we appreciate that. But to do like a whole album, that's weeks of work. You know what I mean? So if I could, if I could, I would, I would just feel bad about asking the guys to say, Hey, you know, uh, somebody wants to hear tales on top of Rift oceans and, uh, we have to learn it because, you know, we're getting paid for it and it would just be a drag to everybody. But if someone was like, Hey, we're going to treat this like a real gig, you know what I mean? Like a session. And this is going to, you know, this is going to take care of everybody. Then we would consider it. There's the same thing for gigs. I mean, people ask us to do gigs all the time, but the thing is we're not a bar band. We can't go to play your friend's bar for $400. We just can't. I mean, not only it's it's not like a snooty thing how are we going to get there you know we got to get there first like where's you know where's your friend's bar oh it's in minnesota i said okay so we gotta we gotta you're gonna pay for five people's plane tickets like you're already before we, you even pay for anything not even like hotels you're already at like four grand so it's it's just expensive that's why you know the, the internet thing is cheap uh, oh man, 90125, I would love to do that. <laughs> um, am I into Doctor Who? No, I tried. I tried to get into Doctor Who. Didn't work for me. I watched like three seasons and I had a friend of mine, she was trying to get me into it. And I told her, I was like, okay, I'm three seasons in. I don't like it. When does it get good? And she said, if you don't like it by now, you're you're not into this. So I think uh, I think it's just not for me. Um, we've never done any Steely Dan songs. No, and people, you know what? I'm, I don't know about Steely Dan. I, I, I never got the uh, jazz rock bug, I guess. I, I think, you know, uh, musicians like, like, you know how, okay. Okay, here's the way I'm going to look at this. You know how, like, you're either into the Beatles or the Stones, right? You follow me? Like, you're, you can like the Beatles and the Stones, but you're really either like a Stones person or a Beatles person, right? I feel like you musicians, like I can still dance a musician's band, it really is. I feel like you're either into like prog rock or Steely Dan <laughs> and like fusion. You know what I mean? And I, w I always like lean towards the English guys, the prog rock and that stuff. So I, you know, I, I like the 20 minute songs with the you know blistering synchronized the uh, hits whereas the jazz guys like the more dense harmonic stuff and the interesting uh, interesting subject matter uh not that okay see okay so see see accelerate you're on the opposite side of the fence here not meant well, then the last thing we need is more polarization um Okay, but, but hold on. Who's that? Yeah, Chip just totally threw my thing out the window. Okay, yeah, Chip, you you just screwed up my theory here, which is fine, because you know what? People shouldn't be put in boxes. But uh, yeah, I, I guess for me, I just let's put it this way: instead of me trying to categorize everything, which is stupid anyway, I always gravitated more towards the uh, proggy stuff. Uh, but you know what? I like Silly Dan. I think. Uh, I know this is like a cheesy song, but I love Real End of the Years. I think that's one of the best guitar solos ever. Chad, I'm looking forward to seeing you too at Damn. That's going to be fun, man. Oh, dude. Um, if you watch my YouTube video, I will show you. Ex my, my video shows me. It shows you. You exactly how to set that up. So check that out. That was a fun. I When I first got the Helix, man. I went nuts. I just, it, it was, once I like got my, my brain wrapped around how to do it, then I just started thinking about all the wacky things. Accelerate, it's okay if you like Nickelback. I like Katy Perry. I like genuine, not the last two albums. The first, the first two Katy Perry, Perry albums, I love them. They're perfect. 
So, you know, everybody likes stuff that's questionable. Let's see, did I miss any comments here? Oh yeah, I'll I'll be there. I will be at Nam. Chad, I just hung out with uh, with Frank all night. Frank came to our gig. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Oh, you have the JP fifteen. Ooh, very nice. I just made I just made a. Uh... Oh, uh, what's Andy? Okay, hold on. Hippie Long, what's Andy doing? Andy, um, Andy's not on the road with us anymore. Andy is um, getting ready to play do a tour with Casim which is going to be awesome, uh, Kasim's version of Utopia, and um, Andy's running a restaurant in Brooklyn, I, I've been there a few times, it's unbelievable, and uh, yeah, and we're going to do some more band stuff, I, we have we shot two videos last week, or two weeks ago, that we're going to be uh, releasing, I edited them, just just sort of staggering them, because I didn't want to dump everything at once, uh, but we have uh, two very different very interesting videos that the things I wanted to be the things I was thinking about making for a long time we finally got to make them so that's pretty cool all right I'm exhausted I th and it, unless anybody's got any more questions I think I'm gonna gonna go to sleep but yeah uh, long story short it was a good good feeling to be back on the road great gig uh, oh thank you Chad Chad you're too nice to me you are too nice to me. Thank you. Um, oh, guys, if you're interested, in, who was saying that? Was that Jean-Claude? What you need to do, if you haven't done so already, go over to Facebook and join Chad's Facebook group. It's the Helix Users or HX Family or Helix Family of Products Facebook group. It's probably the best Helix resource on the Internet. Um, sometimes people ask me very specific questions that I can't answer like hey I have a EVH three channel amp with MIDI but I'm trying to get it to do this and do a five cable method wet dry wet with the, the rolling jazz chorus and use the foot switch out and they give me like these detailed emails and the thing is in a situation like that when the, when the rig is so com complex I need to be in the room with it to, to, to see it it's just hard to imagine it via email so when that happens and sorry chad if i if i do this to you uh 18, members holy crap chad's group has eighteen thousand members that's amazing dude um the thing is about that with eighteen thousand members the chances are someone's tried it you know what i mean someone else and people has that product also uh, chad look out for jean claude he's coming um yeah, Chad's group is, is, it's one of the, and it's also one of the, like, I am I belong to quite a few groups on Facebook. I have a lot of different hobbies, and um, Chad's is the nicest group, uh, meaning everybody's actually helpful. Nobody shits on each other. Like, every other, every other Facebook group I'm in just devolves into chaos or name calling or just, like, some sort of like disgusting spewing and hate and his you know his group has players of every level it's got beginners it has you know people who just play for fun at home it's got you know club date musicians bar cover band musicians uh you know people who just play on youtube it's got touring musicians everybody's in this group and they all help each other and they share presets and they sh and they it, it, the spirit of that whole thing, and it's probably a lot, a lot of it has to do with Chad's, you know, way he he runs the group. It's rare to see something like that. And everybody's so forthcoming with information. No one, no one really. <laughs> My dad actually can't sell helixes. I hate to say that. He can get them. You you could you could buy one from him, but um no he can, wait no he sells helixes. He's not um. My father's store isn't a... My father's store carries line six, but it's through a distributor. And I don't know if he can get... I'm, I'm embarrassed that I don't know more about that, but yeah. Probably, I don't know. Richie, how good is your relative pitch? 
Okay, you want to test me? Go ahead. Let's see. Go ahead, ask me to sing something. And I'll find out, and we'll find out how good my relative pitch is at, at 2.28 in the morning. So hippie long, depending on where if depending on where you're located, go to a mom and pop store or um, you can go to American Musical Supply. Which if you're gonna shop online, that's where you should shop. American Musical Supply. I used to work for American Musical Supply, and those guys are great. I love all those guys. Very very nice group of guys. Um, oh hippie long. The next show is gonna be at. Um, It's going to be Rhode Island tomorrow. And then we have rehearsal, and we have Long Island. Chip, chip. I'm waiting for my uh, my interval question, my my relative pitch question. Sing and descending minor sixth. Okay, so here's a root note. Mm -mm. Well, that's not a minor sixth. It's a minor third. Shit. Not minor sixth. Oh, my God. Why can't I do this? Sing a descending. This is embarrassing. I'm like drawing a blank right now how to do this. Okay, an ascending minor six is bum bum, and a descending minor six would be. That's not the same interval. So I can like say, dun, which is like with an A. If I go down to F, that's not a descending minor six, or is it? No, because that that's going down. A major third. Oh wait, I got it. There you go. That was embarrassing. That's it. Right. Anybody got a piano around here? I'm trying to pull up a piano so I can test myself. Someone make sure that's right. <laughs> My relative pitch is pretty good. <laughs> Oh, hold on, I'll get the I'll get the piano going. I'm doing it. Yes, I practiced it a lot. It's which which I'm mad at myself that I couldn't do it quicker. Okay, here we go. There's your minor six descending. Let's check it. Okay, continue. I don't need this. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, go. Go. There we go. Keyboard. It's blowing a keyboard. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. So I was right. Ba -ba. So that that concludes my stupid human trick portion of the day. Da, da. Okay. <laughs> it just took me a while to get there. All right, guys. Uh, have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with me on this uh, update from the road. And I'll try to like them. It seems like it's a fun hang. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.